Hey, you know, if you're uh, looking for a, to get some uh, commercial cleaning accounts, you can always subcontract from another company. So uh, there's a lot of national companies out there that will go ahead and try to find uh, local janitorial companies uh, to uh, fulfill their service for their national client. Now, some of them are, you know, they're good companies and they pay a, pay a fair split. But uh, there are many of them out there that are low ballers, so be careful of that. You know, I know even if you're just getting started, it's tempting. It's tempting to take any on take on any account that you can, but you know, don't do anything that if you're not going to make money. Uh, that's the whole reason you're in business. You're in business to make a profit. So, uh, if you do have anybody contact you uh, and offer you uh, uh, a subcontracting job for various accounts, could be retail office or whatever it is. It doesn't matter. It could be government. Uh, government work, uh, whatever, is uh, if they offer you a price uh, uh, to clean X amount, you know, to clean a, a facility for X amount of dollars per month, run your numbers and make sure that those numbers are going to uh, make you a profit, you know, that they're offering. And, you know, if, 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 if not, you, you run your numbers and you see that, well, it's just not, you're not going to make any money at it, or the margins are very, very low, then always counter, uh, come back to them and let them know that, well, you know, I can't do it for this price, but I can do it for, for this price. And that's a matter of you knowing what your bottom number is uh, to make a, a fair profit. And, you know, if they don't take that, then just say thanks for the opportunity, but no thanks. And uh, move on to your next, uh, next opportunity. So uh, I think that a good uh, split is 80% uh, uh, goes to, the, to you, the subcontractor, and 20% to the uh, to the general contractor, because all they're doing they're just managing the account. They're not doing a whole lot. They're checking in with them and checking in with you once in a while. Uh, they're just not doing a whole lot. They're just managing the account. You're the one out there actually fulfilling the fulfilling the uh, the service. So. Uh, that's why I think it's always a, that's a fair split. Now you're going to see companies out there that will offer 50-50, 60-40, 70-30, you know, 80-20, and uh, you know, 90-10. Uh, but uh, if you run into some of these companies that are offering that low split, you know, the 50-50, 60-40, 70-30, again, you can run your numbers, see if it's uh, see if it's a, a a price that you actually can make a fair profit at. Um, if not, then again, like I say, just uh, thank them for the time and uh, tell them that you're not interested at this time. So, you know, so that's really the key about uh, doing any subcontracting work. Uh, first of all, you have to be a legal, a legal uh, subcontractor, meaning that you have to have your own business name that's registered, uh, your own EIN, your own equipment, you know, and you, you do your own training. Nobody else can train you. You use your own, your own equipment and uh, supplies. Nobody's supplying that stuff for you. Um, you know, because there's a really a fine line between uh, uh, being a subcontractor and being an employee. Uh, and the, the cleaning industry is notorious for misclassifying uh, employees and calling them subcontractors when they're actually not. So, and you don't want to fall into that. You don't want to get go there because what will happen is that you'll be penalized and fined for, uh, for what you did, for misclassifying employees. And generally, how it, what happens is that you'll uh, you know you'll get uh, a friend of yours or somebody will tell you you know why hire this person as a 1099 employee. Well, first of all, there's no such thing as a 1099 employee. But uh, so anyway, the, uh, they'll tell you to go you know hire them as a subcontractor, 1099 uh, contractor, and uh, they're not a legal company. Uh, they they don't have anything. Uh, in line as to what the IRS uh, definition of a subcontractor is and that's probably the best thing for you to do is to go to the IRS website and actually read what the qualifications are. Uh, that will keep you out of hot water. Um, but uh, generally they're not and uh, these people hire them uh, and essentially all they are is a, a misclassified employee. So uh, they're, they're not paying or taking the taxes out of their paychecks uh, and uh, you know, uh, and a lot of different things, but yet here they're giving them direction, they're giving them training, they're letting them use the, their equipment and so on and so forth. Uh, but what happens is that those people, once you cut them loose, say you don't need them no more, well, they'll go file for unemployment. They haven't got a clue that you're, what you're doing, uh, you know, which is, which is illegal. Uh, so they'll go file for unemployment, and that's when the, uh, that's when you get audited. Because now they got you listed as an employer, and uh, they're going to be wanting to, you know, collect unemployment uh, through your company, and that's what's going to get the ball rolling. 
So uh, when that happens, be prepared to uh, have some people knocking on your door or, or giving you a call uh, asking you to explain, uh, you know, how long this employee had worked for you and this, that, and the other. Uh, you're clearly going to be found that, yeah, you misclassified them, that you were breaking the law, and uh, they will find you and, and penalize you. Uh, depending on how long you've been doing that, uh, it could be thousands and thousands of dollars. I know of some, some companies that it was an extreme, a large amount of money uh, that they got fined, you know, because they've been doing it for years. Um, you know, and when I first got started, when I started my first uh, cleaning company in the, the mid-90s, I did the same thing. A friend of mine said, hey, why don't you just use subcontractors? So that's what I did. Here, thinking that I was doing things the right way, I wasn't. So next thing you know, uh, that's what happened to me as a person went in and fam uh, uh, filed for unemployment. Next thing you know, the process started, and when it was all done and said, I was misclassifying my employees uh, because I didn't know any better. So I ended up paying back taxes and fines, and uh, I learned a lot. And uh, that's how I know firsthand that, you know, uh, don't let people tell you something that they don't know. Uh, you know, it's just not worth it. Make sure that when you're uh, hiring subcontractors that you are actually hiring legal subcontractors. Uh, so go visit the IRS uh, website and get that definition and make sure that you're doing things correctly. Because the last thing you need is to be, uh, be audited and end up paying a bunch of fines and back taxes. Uh, in some cases it may shut you down. So uh, anyway... Uh, this is a fact. It happens all the time. Uh, I have conversations with people just about every week that tell me that they're using 1099, 1099 employees and or they're use, using some other way uh, of thinking that they're using subcontractors, which they actually are not. That's clearly, clearly misclassification uh, of employees. So hopefully, uh, you, you know, do your research and, uh, you know, check out what I said. Uh, because, like I say, I'm, I'm speaking firsthand. Um, I'm speaking from experience, and you don't want to go down that road. It could cost you a lot. So um, hopefully this uh, you find this helpful. Uh, I'm Steve Hansen, uh, co-founder of the Janitorial Store. Thanks.